Hi, uh, my name is Jack Kennedy. I'm a cinematography student here at Full Sail University. Uh, so what propelled me to enroll here at Full Sail? Well, first and foremost, uh, I have to say it was my dad. He was and is my greatest inspiration. Uh, he was the spark that enabled me to uh, pursue uh, my interest in uh, visual arts. How do you do that? Well, uh, with his single-handedly, <laughs> with his sturdy uh, Leica 35mm SLR, he documented the upbringing of his family. That's nine kids, eight brothers and sisters. And us being kids, being spontaneous and impromptu, gave him many uh, photographic uh, Kodak moments. And uh, he, uh, it was uh, uh, a three-ring circus in that house. Uh, whole the, uh, uh, it was good for him and crazy for us. Uh, we had a lot of fun. And um, you know, throughout all that, I found the way he went about photographing us and, and documenting uh, our upbringing, I found fascinating. And inspirational and so later on I ended up uh, buying my my first uh, 35 millimeter SLR and uh, started uh, recording my own uh, moments in time um, after doing that for a while I decided to uh, get some professional training so I enrolled in uh, the uh, a school here in Washington D.C. called the Boston School of Digital Imaging Arts. It's a, um, a very reputable school, uh, part of Boston University. And after graduating there, I looked around. Uh, I wanted to continue in school uh, and uh, started looking for another institution to check out and uh, came across Full Sail. Um, I listened to what they said and uh, liked what I saw and, uh, and signed up. Um, so why did I sign up for cinematography? Well, I like movies. I like everything about movies. Uh, I like taking movies apart in my head. Um, um, I like going to the movies a lot. Um, I, I uh, like Saturday matinees. Um, brings back memories. I also like going to movies on Friday night and Saturday night, but uh, Saturday matinees um, bring back good memories for me. And uh, I remember seeing with a, a brother or a sister or, or a couple brothers um, movies like uh, Ben-Hur uh, stands out in my mind. Um, excellent movie. Uh, or um, Lawrence of Arabia, I uh, thoroughly enjoyed that movie. I never get tired of watching that movie. Uh, and uh, I think it won Best Cinematography uh, um, Academy Award that year. Um, uh, I always derived a lot of educational enjoyment out of movies. Um, and. Uh, over the years, it never diminished. Uh, in fact, it evolved and, and um, progressed, uh, expanded. And um, I remember uh, a key point in my development uh, was uh, when I approached my dad, and, and uh, he, he was, everyone in the family goes to university right out of high school, and, and I approached him and said that, uh, I, I, I want to do uh, four years Navy, U.S. Navy, instead of uh, going to college. And, uh, and he listened to me and, and saw the look in my eye and knew that I was serious. And uh, that uh, he listened to what I had to say and that you know, I wanted a high adventure in my life. I wanted to travel. Uh, um, I wanted to experience life. and, and uh, and see what was out there for me before um, college. And, I, and uh, he got up out of his chair and walked over to me and shook my hand and said, so, son, uh, when, 
man, and where are you going to enlist? And uh, I said, well, I already talked to a recruiter, and uh, next month I swear in up in Baltimore, and uh, then I get on a train and go to Orlando for boot camp. And he said, well, I'm, I'm proud of you. I uh, was coming up with this decision and directing your life. And um, I, uh, I think we should go into dinner. You can tell your mom over dinner, and I think she'll be pleased. And so that went pretty smooth. And uh, <laughs> I, um, next thing I know, I'm in boot camp. And um, I, uh, I go to the PX and buy my first serious SLR camera. And uh, um, it was a, uh, a 35 millimeter Nikon, I think. Uh, it, I'm very happy with that purchase. And that was to document my, my time in, in the Navy. I knew I'd be doing a lot of traveling, and I did. Uh, once I left boot camp, I, my first, uh, I was ordered to report to the Franklin Delano Roosevelt CB-42, that's a aircraft carrier out of Mayport, Florida. Um, <clears throat> I, I uh, arrived to find out that the ship is uh, uh, gearing up to uh, do an immediate deployment to the Mediterranean as the flagship of the Sixth Fleet for one year. Uh, being a flagship means that we have the Admiral aboard our ship and we are in charge of the fleet while we're there. Um, that was a prestigious position to be in. I, I felt I couldn't be happier uh, than, um, knowing that I was in for the adventure I was looking for. And um, so, uh, after a, a month of sea trials, uh, preparing to go to Europe and making sure everything was ship shape and, and sea tight, um, uh, we're up in, uh, on our third day out from Mayport on our way to Europe, and we're uh, up like east of uh, Nova Scotia, and it's very cold outside. And um, I just gotten off work. Um, when you're aboard a ship, the ship never stops. So you work in eight hour shifts. And when you're not working, you're either eating, sleeping, or or um, resting. Um, um, and um, I, I was on, on, on the mess decks and, uh, um, and this buddy of mine comes up and sits down and says, Jack, you, you should grab your camera bag and get your heavy coat on and accompany me up to the flight deck. There's something you got to see. And so I said, okay, I was, I was curious. And uh, uh, come up to this catwalk that's adjacent to the flight deck. And, and, uh, and I look across the flight deck past the superstructure, which is like the conning tower for the, the, uh, the aviation um, uh, direction. And, uh, I noticed all this hustle and bustle going on on the flight deck at that time, and uh, not really realizing what's going on. I mean, I'm, I'm still new to the ship and all, and but I'm looking out across the water and sitting low in the sky. Bob is can you check this out? Um, it is uh, this huge yellow orange globe that is sitting low in the sky, which is the moon. And it's so bright and so large that, I mean, I'd never seen anything that large in the sky before, you know, the, you know at night, you know, um, and, you know, excluding the sun. But, but this was incredible. And not only was the moon itself incredible, but the brightness it was giving off was, you could read by the light of this moon. And, the reflection from the moon on the water was pretty spectacular too, um, and the water itself was like glass. Uh, I think that was part, partially caused by the draw of the full moon. Well, here we are in the North Atlantic in September, and it's very windy out. But there's no white caps. There's no swells. The water is like a lake. Uh, this is the North Atlantic. Uh, I found that incredible. And um, 
and we're up there and are in this wind and, and it's so loud you, you got to communicate through sign language because you can't hear each other talk. You yell as loud as you could and you still couldn't hear. And, and um, then I noticed that it's even getting windier. And uh, so that to me says, well, I think something's happening here and the jets are being taxied around and being located in like in front of the catapult. So I'm thinking, well, we're getting ready to start night operations. Night operations is when the pilots learn how to take off and land on aircraft carriers and if they already know it's just practice. You, know, you can't get enough practice in doing that, especially at night. Um, and so this, that's what night operations is. And uh, so we go back down to the mess decks to warm up and have coffee up and have a cigarette or two and, and uh, just talk about what we had just seen and discuss what's going to be happening when we, uh, you know, um, uh, our first port of call is, uh, is Naples, Italy. And um, there's other people sitting at the table with us uh, on the mess deck smoking cigarettes and having coffee. And, and all the old salts, you know, guys. And this old salt leans over and says, hey, uh, you guys are, are new, right? And, yeah, and he says, well, you never been to Naples, no? He said, well, don't expect much. And there's, there's not much going on in Naples. I said, well, I'll make my own decision on that. Thank you. And, uh, and I was glad I, I said that in the fact that when I got to Naples, it was incredible. I mean, he was set, you know, painting a picture where it's gray, it looks like rain or raining every day, and it's cold and, and sleet and fog and snow. And you know, I said, well, that sounds pretty cool. And then, and I also noticed that, you know, everyone has their own story, so you gotta create your own story. And uh, I've always known that. And um, um, when we're in Naples, I just found the people very gracious and very, very, very uh, uh, genuine and friendly. And, and uh, uh, you know, the, the weather, yeah, it was gray and snow and sleet and ice and, and rain. And but that, that created so many photograph, black and white photographic moments. And I, I, uh, I, I had a lot of fun with that. And it helped my education in, in uh, photography and, and developing my, my compositional eye and creating strong photographs and uh, I, I, I was very appreciative of that and had a great time and, and I was always kicking around with this, this shipmate uh, buddy of mine, Bob, and, and he, uh, he, he said, you know, Jack, have you ever thought about photojournalism as, as a future career? I said, I hadn't given him much thought, but thanks for, for uh, indicating that, and I'll keep it in mind. Then we went to uh, the French Riviera in come springtime, and uh, the French Riviera was, I mean, the French beaches in springtime, warm weather, ooh la la, you know, need I say more? You know, <laughs> it was incredible, um, very, very photogenic and very, uh, a lot of fun, a lot of fun, and uh, uh, we were there for about uh, two months, and then from there we went to uh, the Spanish Riviera, and, uh, and again Bob brings it to my attention, says, Jack, you should really consider being a photojournalist, I think you'd be a good profession. I said, nah, well, we'll see, I'll, I'll think about it. Well, 30 years later, I'm still thinking about it. We'll see what the future holds.